Jack them up, boys. Hey, it's good to have y'all. Welcome to Silverado Cowboy Church, where Jesus, King of the Cowboys, and everybody's welcome. The reason we say that is because we want you to know that God is no respecter of persons. And we are glad that you are here today. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, when we receive the word, it's Jesus called it the washing of the water of the word. Uh, Paul also later on talked about the washing of the water of the word. I want you to receive the word today and to be able to put it into your life and and make use of it. Second Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God. A worker does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That rightly dividing the word of truth means where you apply it to your life. I want you to receive the word today, be able to apply it to your life, and remember that God loves you. I'll talk to you after this broadcast. I noticed the other day I was in Roddy's truck at the station he listens to. They play this song. So we're, uh, we're looking at... Uh, I, I remember that uh, I think we sang it before they had it on the radio. Um, he is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. And he's the one that we, we know that everything that we need, he takes care of. Um, let's, uh, as next week being water baptism, I forgot to ask Fonda to shut those lights off. I'm going to do that so we could see the screen good. Um, I noticed uh, in, with having water baptism and uh, Raul is going to be baptized and anybody else that wants to be uh, next week just let us know and I, I really felt like we needed to go through water baptism uh, so that we could look at some of the things that are so important about it because one of the things and it doesn't matter when you got baptized if you've already been baptized um, And we're going to look at how, how we make a decision who gets baptized. I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to stand up. And the reason is, I don't want to get in the middle of the screen for somebody. Um, and Catherine has all the, the scriptures, so we're going to have the scriptures on the, the board. I guess I should turn this on so I could get it. Who may be baptized? There's no question that a person must be a Christian before he can be baptized. He must know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior and be born again. And sometimes we don't think about the fact that we're born again. Um, being born again simply means that we've made a commitment to Jesus Christ and the old man is dead and the new man has come alive. And that's one of the things that we're going to look, look at with the significance of baptism. What it symbolizes. Uh, Mark 16, 16 says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Now, there are some denominations, and I'm not going to dwell on who they are or, or what they, the difference in the belief is, who believe that you can't even be saved if you didn't get baptized. Um, I'm going to take you to the cross at when uh, the thief uh, next to Jesus accepted Jesus. He said, today you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't have an opportunity to be baptized. He only had an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And that's all it takes. Paul said, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we'll be saved. So we don't get in a position that we say, well, he didn't get baptized, so he didn't, he didn't get saved. Um, should we get baptized? Jesus said this. Jesus, when he came to John the Baptist, 
he said to him, he said, let's do this because uh, John says, I'm not worthy to baptize you. You should be baptizing me. And Jesus said, no, you should do this because we want to do it out of obedience. And that was even before Jesus died on the cross. So we realize that, it, that, that it's an Old Testament principle also uh, for repentance. Uh, Mark, Acts 2.38 Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord uh, of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, we know that this was on the day of Pentecost that that Peter was talking about this. But he said, Repent and let every one of you be baptized. Because what had happened, they said, How come we hear everybody talking... Uh, about Jesus in our own tongue. Uh, there were a lot of people there for the Passover, and that's when this uh, came about. Acts eight thirty six through 38. There it is. Okay. Now, as they went down the road, they came to the water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? If you remember in in this account, uh, I was trying to think which one of the... Philip Philip was translated uh, to the place where the eunuch was riding in the chariot. And he got in there with him. He explained who Jesus was and and about baptism. And that's where he came to. Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Exactly what Paul said. Paul said, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we'd be saved. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down the water, and he baptized him. Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. (coughs) Excuse me. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation from of repentance from dead works and faith towards God of the doctrine of baptisms of the laying on of hands and resurrection of the dead and the eternal judgment. So this is an elementary principle, uh, baptism. That's, That's what the writer of Hebrews was talking about. We don't know for sure who the writer of Hebrews was, uh, Some think it was Paul because of the style it was written, but it could have been any one of the disciples uh, uh, that was traveled with Paul. In water baptism, we follow the Lord Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, I pushed the wrong button. I'm sorry. Okay, this is a little hard to see the numbers. Um, We're going to look at these numbers. This is a picture of what water baptism does. Of course, the cross at the top means that we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Then we go down in the water, and while we're there, uh, and then we start coming back up. So we're going to look at those scriptures you can notice that the, the one on the top left hand says one, and then it goes down, and it's two, three, uh, four. No, I'm talking about right as you go down. Um, then it's uh, and, and, and eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and twelve 
are up there also. But then it goes uh, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, uh, and, the, and the numbers that you can see on there. We're going to go through each one of those. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you that the next slide, this has the right numbers on it. The next, the next slide, the numbers, because the way the slides come, it still started at one. But that'll be, that'll be eight uh, when we get to the next slide. So 2 Corinthians 5.21. Does anybody remember what 5.21 says? He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And so that's number one, and that's what we realize that when we look at this other slide, that's what it takes to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Exactly what 2 Corinthians, and that's who we've become. John talked about that last week, that not only do we become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but we also take on his holiness in that place. Now, does that, and, and one of the things I want to establish in this uh, is Ephesians 4, 8 to 10 is the next one, Catherine. Um, so we look at that and we realize that I'm not supposed to sin. I'm making a statement. I've made Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. What happens if I fall short? I have a covenant with God that I'm still the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm still take, took on his holiness. Does that mean it's okay for me to sin? No, it doesn't. But it doesn't mean that I should remember that I have a covenant with God. And, and this is a scripture we're not going to cover. One of the scriptures that we're not going to cover uh, says that uh, this is the confidence that we have in him. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. And that's over in, in uh, the Johns, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. So we realize that when we get to that point, we realize I have a covenant with God. If I fall short, all I have to do is say, Father, help me not to fall short again. Forgive me for falling short and, and realize that that's what I'm going to do. That does, and, and there's a place that it says, confess your sins one to another. That doesn't mean that you need to blab out uh, to everybody uh, what you've done. You know, most people know you've fallen short. And, and all I've got to do is go to the Lord and, and, and uh, have that covenant. Therefore, he says, this is Ephesians uh, 4, 8 to 10. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high... He led captivity captive, and he gave gifts to men. Know this, he ascended, what does it mean? But the, he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth, and he, des, he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, he might fulfill all things. Um, so we come into that place that we realize, what did he do on the cross? He took my sin. He took it. He took the sin and he left it in, in the, we call the lower parts of the earth, which is why we always say hell's down. Um, and, and I don't want to get into that this morning, but uh, we realize that that's what he, why he descended in that place. And then he ascended to the, he to the Father in heaven. Uh, Matthew 12, 40. Now, remember, we're going uh, on the, the plane of the cross. So now we're at number three, which is down below that. We realize that we're... What we've started to do in baptism is we've started to descend in the water. That's what this picture shows. Uh, I guess I went the wrong way. I'm sorry. Um, Matthew 12, 40 says, 
For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so the Son of Man shall be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And we realize that, that Jesus stayed in the grave for three days and three nights, which, and not getting into this this morning, but at the same time is a reason that he couldn't have died on Friday and rose on Sunday morning because that's not three days and three nights. This is Jesus in, in the Bible. Uh, if you have a red letter edition, this is Jesus talking about being in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. So again, we're at number three. So now we're down into the water and we've uh, descended in that place. Hebrews 2.14 Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he also shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Remember, uh, the devil had been given the power when Adam committed high treason and, and ate of the apple, or excuse me, ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. I hate to say apple because I like apples, um, and I don't want to not have to eat them. Revelation 1.8, we're again, here we are, we're still in the water, number five. Uh, Revelation 1.8, I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Ephesians 4, 8 to 10. Um, and here we are at, at 6. So we're still coming up out of the water. We're not all the way out yet. Ephesians 4, 8 to 10. I, I want to, Catherine, back up to Revelation real quick. Re Revelation uh, 1, 18. I want to think about something while we're here. I think we need to think about the fact that what did Jesus do with the disciples, which means us, because it, we're not just talking about the disciples of that day. What did he say? I give to you the keys to Hades and the death. So what he did was... He gave each one of us the keys. When we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the devil no longer has power over us. Instead, we have the power over the enemy in the name of Jesus. That doesn't mean that sometimes we don't fall short and it's temptation of the devil. God doesn't tempt us with anything. So remembering that we have the keys to the kingdom... We don't have to give in to that temptation. That's where we can be. Now, if I fall short, I have a covenant with God that I can be forgiven, and I've still got the keys to the kingdom. And so we realize that, you know, and I think that's an important issue to remember when we come to baptism or when we come to salvation. Uh, salvation is a thing that gives us the keys to the kingdom, not baptism. Baptism is simply an obedience to what God's told us to do uh, and what Peter said. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Uh, Ephesians 4, 8 to 10. Therefore, he says, when I ascended on high, he let captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Did I already read this? Oh, that's right. It's, so it's, a, again, um, we have to remember that all the way through this. Now this, he ascended, means that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. 
He, he who descended is also one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fulfill all things. Acts 1.3. Acts 1.3 is uh, where they were going up to pray. And when he... Oh, yeah. No, it's not. Okay. To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, 40 days, during 40 days in speaking the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. We realize that what Jesus did, uh, go, go back to A, please. He presented himself after his suffering and many proofs. That means that it's talking about the time before he ascended into heaven. That he presented himself to all of the disciples and showed them uh, many things and speaking of things pertaining to... Go ahead. The kingdom of God. And that's what Jesus did while he was still here. Now, we're going to go on to uh, eight, which is back up at the top again where the cross is. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve is there. And then we're going to come to the coming out again. So remember, this is number eight here at Galatians. Uh, instead, on the on the chart, uh, and and goes on through down through sixteen. So Galatians six fourteen, but God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. So, what happened at the cross? When I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior, the world and all of the troubles and things were crucified at the cross, and I was, I was changed so that I'm not subject to the world anymore. Does that mean we don't live in the world? Absolutely does not. We live in the world. I don't have to be subject to the things that the world does, including uh, financial things, worry, things like that, because all that was paid for at the cross. Romans 6.6, 6, number 7. <clears throat> Excuse me, number 9. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. So you can see why all of these numbers are at the top. That was number nine. We're going to go on to number 10. It's still at the top at the cross. Uh, all the way down through 12 is going to be at the cross. So this is number 10. Uh, Galatians 5.24 and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh and its passions and desires. So, does that mean we don't desire it anymore? No, it doesn't. But it means that we give it up, we give it to God, and we let it go. Because Peter said the pleasures of sin for a season. So we realize that some of the things that the world does might have been very desirable and, and something that we liked. Uh, that's what passions would be. But we no longer do that anymore. So uh, go on to Colossians 3.3. 3. And let's see, this would be uh, 8, 9, 10. This would be 11. So we're still at the top of the cross. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ 
in God. Romans 6, 1 to 14. We're still at the top of the cross. For sh what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we die, who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk, should walk in the newness of life. For we have been united together in the likeness of his death. Certainly, we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been, been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Our Lord. Therefore, do not sin, let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God, being alive from the dead, and your members as interest, interest, instruments. Righteousness to God. For sin shall have dominion, shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. So we look at this and we realize we let, realize that when we go back to this example here. We've looked at everything that brings us, that because that was number 12, which is still at the top of the cross up there. These are all things that happened through Christ Jesus. And, and we, we read one that we were baptized to bury our sin. So all we've do, doing, realizing that baptism is a symbol of our burying our sinful nature, it's... It was already done at the cross. It's just a symbol that we do to recognize exactly what Jesus Christ did. Colossians 2.12 2, Buried with him in baptism, which you also were raised with him through the faith working of God who raised him from the dead. Now, that would be uh, number 13. So, number 13 is down in the water. Uh, so, we're, we're, we're talking about being buried in him. Now, we come to number 4. Uh, no, that would have been number 15. Number, uh, this is 15, uh, Colossians 3, 
uh, 1 to 4, then if you then were raised with Christ, seeking those things which are above, where Christ is, is, setting at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. And we're all counting on that. That's one of the things that we do when we come into that place. I will tell you, I'm enjoying life. I'm not, I'm not wanting to go today, but I'm not afraid to go. Because realizing that we'll be with him in glory. Um, I'd just as soon meet him in the sky. Um, whether that gets, I get to do that or not is yet to be seen when he comes back. Because it says that nobody knows the day or the time. Even though we can see the signs of the times, we realize... Um, from what he says in Matthew 24, that everything that we're seeing right now is the beginning of, of it, but it says the end is not yet. Galatians 3.27 For as many of you as were baptized in Christ have put on Christ. That is number 16, and we realize that number 16, we're out of the water. We're in that place that we've been baptized in Christ. We've been baptized in what he did. And now I have made a symbol of that step that I made when I accepted Jesus Christ. Because the fact is, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you should be baptized in his blood. and Because that's the only thing that can cleanse you. Baptism doesn't mean anything. That's why we baptize uh, only believers. This example here, we're, we're going to look at the scriptures, but you can see that this is, uh, in this symbol, uh, this guy is, uh, is basically dead. Um, and so once that we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, the old man has been buried. I tried to make these this as big as I could, and that was all that would fit on the slide. So I apologize for the scriptures not being that big. But these these are the scriptures that are here in this place. We baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is what Jesus said. Peter said, baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to look at, when we talk about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we realize that we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ because Christ stands for the, the Holy Spirit. Exodus 15.30, uh, excuse me, 15.3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Who's it talking about in Exodus? Has Jesus come yet? No. It's the Father. The Father's name is the Lord. Isaiah 42, 8. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. And he was talking about no, uh, no kinds of images to be set up as as uh, God in uh, for denominations that do that, that's that's uh, between them and God. But that's that's what we believe and what we look at. That no graven, carved images of any kind. And I real I believe that the reason that that was said and set up that way is because I what I shared a few weeks ago about Ephesus, that the whole thing of Ephesus was to make 
gold and silver images to give to Diana. Well, God doesn't want that kind of stuff. We don't need to have. He wants us. He wants our heart. He wants our, our devotion. Nothing else. He doesn't need to have uh, me to give him anything except for the things that it talks about. The reason we bring uh, offerings to the front um, and whether we talk about tithes and offerings, that's, that's a, a, another, another subject. But at the same time, we bring offerings to the front simply because uh, we worship him. And, and he says, given it be given to you. Okay, the son. We want to look at Luke 1, 31. And behold, you conceive in your womb a son and bring forth a son and his name shall be called Jesus. Luke 2, 21. And in eight days were complete for the circumcision of the child. His name was called Jesus and he was and the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So we realize by the last scripture that the son, his name was Jesus. So when we, whether we baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, when we baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, okay, the Holy Spirit, Colossians 1.27 to them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory and his mystery through among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christos means anointed. Uh, when you look at the, the uh, Greek in the New Testament it was written in. Acts 10.38 how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. John 2, 20 and 27. First John, I'm sorry. First John 2, 2 20 says, but you have anointed an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Look at 27 too. But the anointing which you have received from Him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but the same anointing teaches you concerning all things. And it's true and is not a lie. And just as it has been taught you, you will abide in him. Jesus became the anointed when he received the, Holy, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When did he receive that anointing? When he was water baptized. Um, in our place... That doesn't always happen that we get baptized in the Holy Spirit when we're baptized in water. Sometimes we're baptized in the Holy Spirit before we're baptized in water, sometimes after. I can tell you one night uh, Kathleen and I had, we, were, we had a church at uh, the sale barn in Prescott, Arizona. I'm going to tell you, that water was cold. I filled the, the trough, uh, you know, and here uh, Scott takes care of it and he fills the trough that we baptize in, which is over in the corner. It'll be out here next week uh, with, with warm water um, because we have a hot water tank. But there at Prescott, I mean, it was filled out of a spring. There was snow on the ground, and I filled that trough. I'm going to tell you, when I baptized, I baptized three people at night, and one guy had got saved the week before, got baptized this week, and when he came out of the water, he was speaking in tongues and got baptized in the Holy Spirit. He stayed in that water about 45 minutes, kneeling in the front, and he says, 
this water is so warm. My arm was blue. I knew how cold the water was. But he said, this water is so warm. And it was because the anointing of the Holy Spirit had come over him. And it, it was awesome. Uh, but it doesn't always happen that way. I've seen that happen at Abbott Loop Christian Center in, in Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, they used to roll a, a tank out at, at every church service. They had baptism in the back. People went in the back and got prayed for to receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, people went in the back and got saved. Um, sometimes they got saved, got in the, the water, and, and, and I watched one night. Uh, the same thing happened with him. They filled that one out of, out of warm water too. Um, but that was significant when this young man came out of the water and he just stayed there. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it, it was time to go home. And he, he just stayed in that water and, and prayed in other tongues. I pushed the wrong button again. I don't know how I did. Oh, well, that's the last slide, isn't it? That's why it keeps doing that. Okay. <laughs> now I know what's going on. I thought I covered this in here, and maybe I did already. Um, okay, I, I, I did, but, but I didn't. Um, right here when we talk about who, must, who, who can be baptized, I don't care if you're baptized as a baby. If you're watching by internet, I don't care if you're baptized as a baby. Were you a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ? It'd be hard to be a three or four month old baby and have made a decision. We really believe, you know, and, 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 and I've seen children as young as three and four years old know what they were doing and accept Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. You know, we, we always uh, make a statement that it's probably the age of accountability. We're doing right or wrong, whether we really make that stand and become a Christian. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say that there's a certain age. What I am going to say is we only baptize believers. We only baptize people that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Johnny, I think you got baptized here, didn't you? I thought so. Um, and, and it's when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior that we make a decision to be baptized. Um, sometimes uh, we've made a decision, we've been baptized already, and then we've lived the other life. And I'm going to say the other life means I just kept doing whatever I was doing and, and acting the way I was acting. And then, then we really come and we make a stand and we rededicate our life. Is it okay to get baptized again? Absolutely is. I remember um, when Rowdy Johnson made the, the uh, recommitment. He got in the water with his boots and everything. And I remember just before he went down, he reached in his pocket. He borrowed my truck. And he handed my clicker to me, and he says, I probably don't want to get baptized with your clicker. Um, it, that was what he wanted to do. It was, his, it was his statement and his decision. Do I think you need to re be rebaptized? No, I don't. Is it okay? Yes, if, if, if you think it is. If you think you need to be. And, and so when we look at this, who can be baptized? It's only believers that we baptize. So the first question I'm going to ask anybody that says they want to be baptized, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? We were in Yonkala, Oregon, Scott and I, and uh, Greg McDonald. And uh, 
I, I don't remember even what I had preached that night, but, uh, but we were going to baptize kids. I probably talked about baptism. I, I don't remember. And a young man came down out of the grandstands. That was another place we filled the trough out of a spring. It was cold. I can promise you, we, we, we baptized 38 kids that night. Is that right, Scott? I was thinking it was about 38 kids. All, all I can tell you is by the time I got done baptizing kids, my arm was blue, literally blue, because that water was so cold. But a uh, young man named Josh came down out of the top. He, he asked if he could be baptized. I said, Josh, have you ever accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I don't even know what you mean. And I talked to him, and he accepted Jesus right there. Then he got baptized, and the next day, he, that's the boy that I've shared that got bucked off and drug on, under a saddle bronc. Um, and because he had got saved... And his life had changed. When he got home, his grandmother accepted Jesus. His mother accepted Jesus. His sister accepted Jesus. And, and the, the last time I had counted, about uh, 40 people had accepted Jesus simply because of what had happened to him. Um, again, that was, when, when do you have to accept Jesus? It's okay to be baptized the minute you accept Jesus. But you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So if you're watching by internet, that's the prerequisite that you, you have to make sure you've accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And, and that's the one thing that I tried to put in here. And, and, and actually, I kind of cut some things out of the, the Bible school book that I wrote to, to put this together today. Because if we really got into it, we'd have still been here halfway through the week, getting all the way through it. So if you'd like to have more of that, I can email it to you uh, if you give me your email address. I want to do this because there may be somebody watching by Internet, you know, and I like to think that everybody in church has made that decision. Uh, but... Uh, we need to know that we, we have accepted Jesus. And this is exactly what Paul said. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we'll be saved. And that's, that's all we have to do. You know, we do this thing where we pray this prayer, God, I'm such a sinner. And, and the fact is, God already knew we were, we were sinners because it says everybody's fallen short of the glory of God. Another scripture that says, he that says that he has no sin is a liar. And so we realize that each one of us has fallen short, and we need to make that step. So let's just say this together out loud. Um, and if you're watching by internet, if you do this uh, this morning uh, for the first time, you will have made a statement. Jesus is the Lord of my life. Jesus is the Lord of my life. I believe that God raised him from the dead. And that's all it takes to, to be saved. Uh, and so uh, if you're watching by Internet and you just did that for the first time, welcome to the family. There's an email address that will show up uh, at the end. And uh, just let us know that and we can send you some uh, things. Um, the best thing to do is let's do this. Instead of emailing through the website, um, email uh, Dave at SilveradoCowboyChurch.org. Um, sometimes the website goes to junk. Anyway, this is what we're going to do next week. If you want to get baptized or you have a uh, child that wants to get baptized that hasn't been baptized, I I'd love to, to, to talk to you about that. Um, Johnny knows that the one thing I'm going to ask because I did him when he, when he wanted to be baptized. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And if the answer is yes, water is, is where we go from there. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love that you shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, for your acceptance of us. When we say yes, we love you. We thank you for all that you've done. 
that you just accept us. Thank you for that promise. In the name of Jesus, amen. Remember, Jesus loves you and so do we. Well, as you've watched the, the broadcast, uh, you need to know that uh, God loves you and cares about you. I hope today that as you listen to this, you'll see that his plan for you is to succeed in everything that you do. Anytime we look at the Word, we realize that the Word, uh, when it, it comes alive inside of us, that we begin to get what it says. As we get what it says in us, then we become victors in life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, today I hope that you'll make that change. Paul said this, he said that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we'll be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart one believes unto righteousness. And what that means to you is all you do is you say, Jesus is the Lord of my life. I believe that God raised him from the dead. Now that can't be just something you say with your mouth. You have to, you have to believe it in your heart. You have to know that God loves you and cares about you. Because that's the truth. That'll make your eternal destination heaven. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That life was Zoe, means the God kind of life. And I want you to have that today. I want you to know that that will cause you to rise to a new level. For those of you that are believers that have been watching this, uh, for any of you, and if you made a change today, make sure you write to us on that uh, address and website that you're going to see in just a minute so that we can send you some stuff. We're excited that God came alive inside of you. If you're believers and, or somebody that wants to give tithes and offerings today, there's a button right there on that website that says tithes and offerings. Uh, one of the websites, if you're on it, it says donate. Just push that button. It gives you the opportunity to give to the ministry, realizing that you're putting good uh, seed in good soil that is plowed, is fertilized, and watered, and I expect you'll receive a crop. I want to pray over you right now. Father, I thank you for those that made a decision today to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Father, for those that give, I ask you to give back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more. And Father, we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus, and by his blood, amen. Remember, Jesus loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord.